thank you for yeah. listening to my first talk. I'm going to be talking about twine in a single node. So by a show of hands, uh, who has used twine before? All right, we've got some nerd people in the crowd. Sweet. So uh, yeah, for everyone else, we'll be going over what twine is, why it's great, what are the limitations, and because twine is a story engine, we'll be going over a bit of the story and then why this whole system is so much better. So this is how to use Twine in a nonsensical way that actually makes more sense. Uh, can I get the next slide? So as I said, uh, first part we're going to be going over what is Twine, just so everyone has a good overview of what we're actually talking about. Next, uh, why it's great, because honestly it is an awesome thing to use just for story. Limitations, and then going to story, so your major branches, make sure we're doing this first. Sorry, the major beats, then your branches, then your dialogue, then your choice, and then one node to rule them all. This is not how you're supposed to use twine, but it's fucking dope. I'm not allowed to swear, right? It's fine? Yes. Okay, sweet. All right, cool. Just give me one now. All right. Um, and then uh, for anyone, I'm assuming everyone here uses a text editor, but we'll do, just be doing a quick overview of how to use one. Uh, next, tracking your scenes in relation to the script. Since Twine doesn't really do this, so we'll be showing how a script tra tracks your scenes, your acts, where you are, and then how to use this in Twine. Next, uh, choices and responses. I'm going to be using the phrase, the diamond, a lot. We'll be going over what that is, but you want diamonds. Diamonds are sweet, use them. Uh, searching and edits. You can do this in Twine. You can do this in the text editor. That's why you want to use one. And lastly, uh, playtesting and finding bugs and the beauty of this entire system. Any questions? Next slide. All right. So, the fuck is Twine? So for all of you who haven't used it, it's a narrative storytelling kind of engine. Uh, it's not anything like Unreal or Unity, but it does make games. So technically an engine. So here's the main page. Uh, it gives you a nice layout of all of your nodes. And really all a node is is describing a situation and then giving the player a choice. And you can add in some pictures. So the white text is what's happening, the blue text is the choice they have. Next slide. So here are two uh, twine examples. You can visualize your story. I um, mean, each choice makes a new node. So each branch is a different uh, choice the player has. And you can go back to the previous one or keep going down. Next slide. So, uh, for narrative, uh, it's focus as, sorry, uh, the narrative focus games by nature and it's easy to learn. Uh, it has a great manual and for prototyping it's really nice. So, instead of going into Unity and building something and then realizing everything you uh, have an issue with for story, Twine's awesome for just making something, figuring out the issues, and then spending your time in a uh, engine that takes a while. Next slide. So, there are some limitations. So, can anyone tell me if this is a branch or a choice? You can't, trick question. They look the exact same. So, when you give the player a choice, it's technically a branch in the game, it looks like a branch, it's branching out, but it's a choice. So, they're choosing to do something, whether or not that has consequences, whether or not that branch is actually a branch in the narrative, or it's just a meaningless choice you're giving the player that kind of has some consequence, it's impossible to tell. Next slide. Uh, next, the other limitations is it can get complicated really quick. So as you can see, the one on the left, this, this is my first Twine game. This actually uh, ran really smoothly, but oh my god, was it hard to actually figure out what the hell was going on. So the part on the left was actually the, uh, the actions and the, uh, the so the combat system, and then the part on the left was, or sorry, the part on, yeah, part on the left was the uh, dialogue, but it was just so hard to keep track of. What you really want is the uh, two slide, or two pictures on the far left, so diamonds. You are giving the player a choice, uh, and reverting back to one option. This is the diamond, you want those. Next slide. Now, when you're trying to put a uh, script in a twine, this sucks. Why? Because a script is a single document. Twine is not. It's all these nodes, so you have to just copy and paste your script into each node. It's really difficult, really annoying, and especially when you're doing edits, uh, really hard to just be going back and forth. 
So ideally, you want to have everything in one spot. Uh, next slide. And debugging, uh, Twine does have a debugger, but uh, it's going to let you know what the issue is roughly, but it's kind of up to you to find where in the uh, script it is or where in the node. Um, much easier to use a text editor, uh, and I'll show you why, why having one node is actually the way to go with this. Next slide. So, story first. It's a Twine, or it's a story engine, so we're just going over the basics of uh, a story and why using one node in Twine actually makes a lot of sense for this. So the whole system is getting over the limitations of Twine, but also using story in a much better way uh, to track where you are in the story and uh, have a better concept of both your branches and your choices. Next slide. So step one, uh, I just want to start with some questions. So uh, what is important about knowing your major story beats, and what is a major story beat? Can anyone answer that? Anyone? Yeah. It's like a main event in the story that prompts big changes. Perfect. So uh, what happens if you don't hit a major beat? Why well, doesn't make sense? Story doesn't make sense. Fuck yeah, it doesn't make sense. You need to hit all your major beats. So that's a good way of telling if a beat is major, if you take it out of the story, it doesn't make sense. So you want to figure all these out first because every single branch you need in the story needs to go back to those major beats. So the branches are essentially a different path to get to these major beats, but if you don't know where you're ending and where you're starting and each of the major beats along the way to make it make sense, that <laughs> you're not going to go anywhere. So you need to figure those out first. And uh, as you can see here from just that basic story structure, it is linear. So when you're uh, looking at a Twine game and it just has this massive branch, it doesn't really give you a clear picture of your major beats. It can get uh, complicated really quick. Uh, and for theme, can anyone give me what the theme is? Or a brief overview of theme. Yeah. Uh, the general kind of concepts that are explored throughout a story. Perfect. Yeah, concepts, moral statements. Uh, just a binding uh, feature of the story which kind of ties everything together. So uh, this isn't really important for uh, this talk in general, but it's a talk about story, so we got to touch on theme. I'll be doing a disservice to story if I didn't touch on it. Next slide. Okay, so how to decide what a major branch is. So when you're at a, uh, a major beat, you're just asking yourself, how can I get to the next beat in a different path? Now. In Twine, as I said, it doesn't really differ differentiate between a choice or a branch, but here you're asking yourself, does this have a true consequence and can I not go back from this? So we're thinking about this as uh, simple choices that were given the player that don't really have a consequence, that's not a branch. If they're going down a path and if they're either going into the dark forest or they're going up the mountain, that's a branch. If they're choosing one romantic partner over another one, that's a branch. Next slide. Do I need all my NPCs to be on theme? Yeah, you do. So uh, for theme, uh, just to touch on this again, um, the, all the characters by this point should kind of flush out, uh, and as you're writing your dialogue, each one should have a unique voice, be timed back to the theme, so theme is like a, uh, a moral spectrum, so pick somewhere on that line that each of the NPCs are, and as you're writing your dialogue now, make it into one single document. So this is not the time to do your branches, you have the idea of what they are, this is not the time to do your choices, you just want one smooth linear narrative just to keep this concise, keep your story on point, put it into one space, and just make sure your dialogue is crisp, giving a clear voice, don't worry about choice this point. That's for next step. Next slide. And here's your final step, your choices. So once you have your, all your branches, which uh, are not actually spelled out in your uh, story yet, you have your dialogue with no, no choices. Now you actually make your choices and branch that out. So this is a nice way of keeping it uncomplicated and uh, having it in a single document. And you want these diamonds. So at the top, we have the NPC question. So uh, for player choice one and two, uh, a unique response or something, 
uh, it's just going to give them the illusion that it actually has a, a consequence. And same with the unique response for uh, number two, and then a common response for both of them. So it's, it's, it's a really nice way of making it feel like there's a, uh, a consequence, but that there actually being a consequence and not making it so that you're writing just balloons in this massive, unmanageable, extremely difficult uh, thing to handle. So just at the bottom here, I just want to ask, so for this one, a player action that changes how the MDC feels about the player character. Uh, do you think that's a choice for a branch? Anyone? Branch. That, so I think that one would be a choice. So because the player action changes just how the MDC feels, you just update a few variables. The story doesn't actually change. You can bring that back later on, but that's just going to be the diamond where uh, they make a decision, a few things are updated, have a unique response, go back to the main story. Have a number two, a player action that changes their abilities or disadvantages. See, I think that would be a choice. <laughs> because again, you're just updating variables, the story stays the exact same, and uh, how they play the game is going to shift, but really your story is still the exact same. Uh, how about a player action to choose one romantic partner over another one? Branch! Hell yeah, fuck it. Yeah. We got it, branch. Is that one you can't go back from. You're choosing one or the other, it's binary. Uh, lastly, a player action to choose one of two paths to a destination, each accompanied by a different NPC, nerf and buff. Branch, clear, movie branch. <laughs> all right, uh, next slide. So, the solution to all this. I was mentioning some of the limitations of Twine. It just balloons up to be a manageable. Uh, you can't tell what's a branch or a choice. Uh, it's not linear, it uh, branches out, so it's kind of hard to tell what your story is actually doing. And since uh, a script is in one document and Twine is not, uh, it's kind of hard to go back and forth. And the way of doing that is just to make all it all in one note. So, next slide, please. Let's go over that. So, how to go from this dumpster fire to straight fire. That's our goal. So, as I mentioned, this is my first game that I made. Uh, it worked, which is complicated as hell. And this is the game I recently made. So, uh, the story in it just initializes all the variables. The main menu is a main menu. Uh, and that one node that's titled title page runs the entire game. So that's where all the dialogue is, all the mechanics, um, all the variable updating is. It just all just reruns through, checks what the current state is, and then gives the player what they need to see. Next slide. So I'm uh, assuming all of you have used a text ed editor before, but for any of you that haven't, uh, it's just a nice way of highlighting the code that you're using. Uh, Twine doesn't highlight stuff for you, so do not do that to yourself. You're better than that. Please use text editor, make it nice and pretty. Uh, so all you need to do is download some like Visual Studios. You can search SugarCube, which is the Twine language, and then download that. Everything's beautiful. Next slide. So uh, just formatting for a script. In case anyone hasn't seen this, it's the location, uh, a uh, more specific location. Or uh, more general, and then time of day. So uh, a script is set up like this so that you're tracking where you are uh, and you're moving scenes every time you move location or time. So in Twine, it doesn't do that. You need to set that up for yourself. But a good way of tracking that is do something like this, where you're tracking your act, your location, your scene, the NPC you're talking to, and the choice row. So there's many ways of doing this. This is how I did it. But essentially, every single choice you make this variable updates, it's a string, so I just change the string name. Um, and then if there's something that needs to be activated, so something like a click, then there's a dialog activation. So it's just rewriting itself over and over again, and uh, it's all in that one document. So this way I can actually tell what part of my script equals what part of my client. Next slide. Uh, so just to show you the, uh, the choices that the player has, we have, uh, here we have choice A, choice B, and a good habit to get into is just to uh, give yourself notes in your code as well. So I just, again, repeat this up top, uh, let me know what choice I'm starting with, what choice I'm ending with, and uh, as we'll see in a second, this is having that nice diamond shape. Next slide. 
So uh, even though I have choice A and choice B, I'm first starting out with a uh, common response and then a unique response for choice A. So three minutes left. So uh, this is, as I said, the diamond shape. So this makes the player feel like they're actually having a consequence. All, I have just written uh, this unique part and then the story is actually uh, going back to the common response. So again, just uh, choking the story into a certain way. Next slide. So uh, at the bottom of that, uh, so we had choice uh, 16, and then that just goes into uh, choice 17. So again, choice A, choice B. You can see if this is all the variables that are updated, uh, health, and just keeping account of uh, where I am in uh, this current scene just so I know how many times the player has interacted with uh, the player. Again, you don't need to do it this way, but just a good habit to get into to uh, have a count of how many interactions you've had and where you are in the scene. Next slide. And twine, you cannot search, you can just replace stuff. It's super annoying. Uh, but in a text editor, you can search uh, one word, you can search a whole sentence, you can find out exactly where everything is in the document. So that's why it's a good practice to use the text editor for everything and then just copy and paste it into Twine once you're done. Next slide. Uh, and debugging, uh, much easier in a text editor as well. So uh, once you find an error, you can search the entire document for it, find out exactly where it is. Again, just super easy to do it that way. Last slide. All right, what, the beauty of this system. So uh, having it in a single document uh, just makes it transferable much easier from a script to Twine. This isn't exactly how Twine's made to work, but it's so much cleaner. And this game that I made, I, right now it is really one act, but how the system's made is that uh, at the end of your acts, that's when you want to have your branches. So you can have small branches within uh, the act where you're essentially going back to those choke points, but because this is one act, I just have one node. So it's called uh, Twine one node, but really this is one node for one act. So every act you have, that's a new branch. So this way you see a clear visual representation of where your branches are. Uh, you know all of your choices are within the node, and it's nice and clean out there. I want to edit the story mechanics dialogue and state all together. So uh, if, if you've uh, made a twine game and it repeated the code over and over again in each node, super annoying to go in, uh, change every single node over and over again. So this way you're just editing one uh, all at once. And good practice to get into is design your first act first, then get into your next act so that you're just editing that once, you nail down the mechanics, and then do everything after that. And I think this is a first for Twine, so uh, yeah, that's kind of it. And yeah, that's it. Uh, do you have time for questions? Yeah, all right. How many like the code with that script in the end? Uh, I, I, I think, not counting blank space, I'd probably be around like 15,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, a lot of it is just copy and paste and just repeat it because I'm just using the same code for all the dialogue and all the mechanics. Uh, but yeah, roughly 15,000. Did you try any other? Um, what was the other one? Yeah, um, I can't, I, there, I guess in school I learned Twine and uh, yeah, SugarCube was a, a language which I found easy to uh, code in because it was similar enough to other stuff, but yeah, I think I spent like a day in some other ones which I can't really remember now and Twine was just the go-to. Yeah? So, um, first of all, awesome job, I think you know what um, you talk about branches and choices. Um, would it be uh, right to say that it's more of a decision on how complex the thing you want to build is, where choices could, could be as uh, you know, big as like a partner would not matter if the story is not about it, versus yeah. like, uh, even something as simple as like hurting someone's feelings, like communicating the game, because it could be just about the complexity of the game or the game. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. And it, I guess the the reason I differentiated between choices and branches is you're going to constantly have like mini choices throughout the entire uh, scene, act, 
that together, uh, once you're changing all those little variables, will add up to something. Uh, but usually the player is not going to know what exactly what the outcome is versus if, if you are straight up saying it like you need to choose me or this other person, like they clearly know that that's a branch. Um, and yeah, like a choice, like yeah, you can have, you should have consequences for a lot of your choices, uh, but it's just not a hard, fast rule. And for the most part, you'll, you just do want to have that end shape. But remember, every single time you branch out, uh, that is a factor of two. So you need to keep that in the in account for your story because uh, that's how it gets out of hand really quickly. Like everything has a choke point essentially. Yeah. So I, I just want to reuse uh, dialogue as much as possible. So give unique responses that reference what they did at some point in the game, but then there's common stuff that no matter what makes the story make sense. So there could be like four different options. I reference each of those four options, but then uh, the same beat in the story is still hit. Um, and then if they've gone down, like if they've chosen uh, one partner over another one, then those are two separate branches. So those that part of the game is like two very distinct bits of writing, but uh, that's still only like two two different stories versus like eight. So yeah, just keeping it in check essentially. Yeah. Would you consider a choice that maybe leads to a whole bunch of Side stuff and then come back to something far is still it's still a diamond shape. It doesn't really matter how big the branches of the diamond are as long as they totally. Over. Yeah, and that's what I was saying with branches. Um, as, as soon as you know your major story beats, it like a branch is essentially just a different path from getting to the same point. So yeah, you can have like a super meandering path to get to the same point uh, as long as like you know you need to end here just to make the story make sense. So yeah, you can have like a bunch of different side quests as long as uh, yeah they're either ending where they started or ending at the next beat. Yeah. So you kind of reinvent the regular code in a way, like imagine like imagine like you can kind of play like a chess game with this, like you just use all these time variables to make a chess board, and then just tell the player to make a choice of the next move, and just completely just use twine. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> yeah, I I found it easier to do it this way just because uh, yeah, once you get to a certain length of story, um, yeah. just finding like if you you can either like you can have a script and then search a line in your script uh, in the Twine code and then like kind of know which node to click on. Yeah, it's, uh, like this, it's just really difficult to do it that way. Kind of like just a fight with programming code. Nice. And also, like, the idea of diamonds being good is kind of shocking to me as a result. Why is that? It's like, you know, it's, called, it's known as the dreaded diamond in, in software. You know, but just diamond dependencies, diamond inheritance, all of that is just... It's bad, line. yeah, yeah. It's classic, <laughs> and I'll hear what you're saying. It, it's it's like, like, yeah, you so. don't need the diamond if you have an unlimited budget. Uh, but, yeah, we're all indie developers, and uh, we're not swimming in money, so diamonds are good. <laughs> Uh, no more questions, of course. Oh, sorry. I, I can fully answer your questions after. I'll be around, so, yeah. Cheers.